All right, welcome back. And um, uh, last time we did uh, player damage, damage done to the player, and we did this with uh, with some fire. And this uh, a sphere right here, when entered into it, will uh, hurt the player in such a way that he end up dying. He he ends up dying. Um, so now we have a way for the player to get damaged. We'll, let's try and get the AI to damage the player. So I want to open up a couple things. I want I want the blend space for the zombie, and then I also want the the zombie actor. And then I believe I do want the third person character as well. So we go to. Uh, the animation graph here and this is where all of our animations are going to take place and how it gets to each state so automatically it's going to go to idle and we want another state over here and we're going to call this attack open that up and save going to compile we're going to have a little error and that's because we don't have anything in this let's go back to our uh, Stupid zombies, animation, standing. Uh, right here, we want the uh, attack. And so I'm going to retarget animation asset, duplicate and retarget, show only compatible skeletons. And we want to get our uh, main skeleton here and retarget him. I want to go ahead and drag this into. Uh, Alright, well we already have the attack, so didn't realize that. I'll we'll go ahead and delete that. But we would put them in our zombie animation. So now we have an attack for an animation attack. And we're gonna drag that out and plug it into the output compile save. And then we're gonna go back into here again. Into the uh animation blueprint. And then we want to uh, cast to the basic zombie because that is the uh, thing that we want. And then off the object, we're going to try to get pawn owner. And so the owner of the pawn that is using the animation is going to be the reference. And as basic zombie, we're going to get. We actually don't have this yet. So we're going to go here into the variables and we're going to add attacking keep that as a boolean back over to the blueprint we're going to get attacking and then off of attacking we're going to promote it to a variable I'm going to compile and that's labeled as attacking down here same as this one here go to the state the state machine and we want idle to attack we're gonna bring out is attacking get attacking because if this is true it will enter the uh, the transition back to the state machine we want to be able to go back from attack back to idle so we want to drag from this little outer box right here drag that over to the idle open that up and bring in your attacking get but except this time off of it we're going to get a not boolean and plug that in. So if attacking is not true, it's going to enter the transition to go back to the idle. So now we have everything we need inside of our uh, animation blueprint for now. And now we need a way for the zombie to start attacking the uh, third person character. And the way that we are going to do this, I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way. You know what? I'm just going to get rid of them, just so they're not in the way. Move this up. And the way we are going to do this is we're going to create a little box right here. I'm going to do a uh, box, my spelling's atrocious, box collision. We're going to rename this just so we uh, understand what box this is for. And this is... Um,
tech and player collision. It's just my point of reference. You can name it whatever you want. And we'll go ahead and we'll adjust it. And um, we're always going to be attacking, be attacked in front of the zombie. That's always going to be, I mean, we'll, we'll never be attacked in front. So we're going to go ahead and move it right here in front of the zombie. Um, there are other ways to do this, and we may go over it as well. We might have to transition into another way of doing it, just to simplify things. But this is how we're going to do it for now, <clears throat> until we can, because um, right now we're just getting something to build off of. And so we got this little box right here. And click on the uh, the component here, and scroll down to the uh, to the events down over here, and we want um. On event begin overlap and again off the other actor just like we have we have it somewhere so on basic zombie off the other actor you want to do uh, cast the third person character because that's the character that we are overlapping if that doesn't match then this thing it won't fire off and then um Give me one second while I uh, try to remember. Ah, yes. All right. So, grab attacking. We want to set attacking to true. So when he gets into this uh, state right here, into this uh, uh, idle state, and maybe he comes to us, or we, you know step in his range he'll get put into attacking once we get within this box bounds here and that'll set attacking and then we're gonna again click it the uh the component over here scroll down we're gonna go end to overlap we're just gonna copy this and paste it right down here below bring those into it except on attacking we're gonna uncheck it so when we leave that it, it we're, we're, we're saying that it cannot attack so, AI walk. We're going to stretch that back a little bit, <coughs> and we're going to do uh, a branch. And we're going to click up faults, and we want to bring out attacking. Attacking is going to be the condition, so we don't want him to be able to walk around if he's in the attacking state, which is exactly what, what we don't want. So, it's not going to do anything if it, if it does that. So... Let's go back over here, and we want open up zombie attack. This is the animation that we are using. Let's go ahead and pause this, and we'll start at the beginning, and we're going to move across, and let's say right here is a good spot. We're at about, about halfway through it. And we're going to add a notify. Insert a notify. Oh, well, I'm doing this all wrong. We want to add a notify. want to right click on it and add a new notify. We're going to call this attack. I'm going to drag this down, line it up right here. We're going to save it go back to our blueprint it's gonna run through that and so we're gonna go back to uh, the event graph we're gonna right click and we're gonna type it in the attack event notify attack and that's exactly what we want so every time that that little swing happens when it hits that's this point right here this is gonna fire off so over here we're gonna do cast a third person character get player character we're gonna get the health we're gonna set the health 
off of the health, we want to do a minus float. And just like our fire, we're going to do 10. And then just before over here, there we go. We're going to make sure that this can only happen only if you were within that box. And to make sure that happens is uh, right here in basic zombie. He can only be in attacking position if you are overlapping that box. And it's set here as well. And we got a little error right here. That's because this target needs to be plugged into third person character. Alright, so now we have a way for the zombie to uh, damage us. But we don't have a way for that zombie to... Uh, come at us for any reason and so we are gonna we're gonna set yeah, we're gonna add a component over here and we're gonna use pawn sensing for this and pawn sensing is basically just senses you know it can he can see and he can hear uh, through this component here uh, this green line here is his uh, radius of sight and we're gonna actually uh, we're gonna turn that down I think maybe about 45 degrees which is down here in the AI and scroll down to here in the per peripheral angle vision 45 so now that's his that's his angle of view we'll go ahead and save that We'll go to construct uh, the event graph and pawn sensing on the right side when you click on it you see on pawn C we're gonna go ahead and add another event for that and when the pawn does see it we're gonna need to set a variable and we're gonna call this one we're gonna call this one I see you drag that out and we're gonna set I see you to true well, uh, we missed a step. Yeah, let's grab one of these. And we'll go ahead and plug this right in. Because you need to tell it what pawn he needs to look for. And it's going to be uh, a third person character. So this is going to be the only character that this pawn sensing reacts to. And so now it's set to uh, I see you. Let's back up AI walk again. I want to add another branch and this one is also going to be on false I'm going to add in I see you but this time off of the true we are going to do uh, AI move to No, we are not. On pawn sensing, we're going to do a AI move too. Because we want that to happen almost right away once we, once we see it. And we need the target actor as the third person character. And pawn, we're just going to get a reference to self. And for destination, we're going to get as third person character, we're going to get player... No, we're going to want to get world location of the player's mesh. Plug that right in. Let me tidy up a little bit. All right, so um this is something that I've learned. If you double click on a line, it adds a reroute node. And you could just reroute where things go. I do this because it makes it look a little a little neater. And the acceptance radiance we're gonna crank that at fifteen. I 
add a delay after the success. Point two, let's just say, or let's just give it a, let's give it a point five. I'm gonna give it point five, and then we're gonna create a custom event over here. I'm gonna call that move to uh, not AI because we're not gonna remember that because we need to move to player. I'm gonna plug that right into the uh, move to AI. I'm gonna branch right here. And we want to uh, see if they are attacking. And if they are not attacking, we're going to get the call function for move to player. Uh, let's test this out and see how it, how it runs. Move in front of the player. He sees me coming up. And now he's swiping at me. You can see there's uh, some camera stuff going on here, and we'll uh, work on that later. And that there, we have a, uh, we now have the enemy attacking the player. Um, there is one thing I do want to do, and that's um. I'm going to bring this pawn sensing back a little bit. And we're going to grab the uh, character movement, bring it down. I want to stretch this out and we're going to we're going to set max walk speed. Drag this down, make it look neat. And right now we have it set at uh 150. Let's go 400. And we'll try that out. And this, what that's going to do is that's going to set um, how fast our player is, uh, how fast that player is moving. And we want it, I want it to go a little bit faster uh, when the character has been spotted. Back that up. All right. Compile, save. We'll play. We'll run in front of the character. And now he's running faster. Now he's swinging at me. All right, go ahead and take a good look at this. Um, it's uh, everything's relatively straightforward. Uh, we'll be getting to more complicated stuff at some other point, but um, we'll go through and we'll fix up some of the bugs later. Uh, let's just we're gonna try and get some of the more important information in there, and then kind of work on everything all at once with the with the whole bug fix. And so I really do hope you and uh, you enjoyed this one. I apologize it's a little short, but uh, I'm, up I'm uploading two today to make up for the lack of uploads. Um, if you uh, want to see more, just uh, let me know. Uh, tell me what you want to see, and we'll eventually uh, work through the list.